Um, hi, everybody. I am Mr. Setinet. Um, I have been uh, an ex checker for <laughs> Thanks, Catherine. <laughs> Forever. <laughs> My title for the training for the exchequer training last what two weeks ago was exchequer for life. So, currently, I'm the um, deputy to all things, and one of which is to Catherine. So, why don't you take it away, Catherine? Okay, I am. I am Dame Catherine, and just so you know, I call uh, Mr. Satina mom because she was my pelican and one of the people who really I worked closely with as an exchequer because for a long time I did sign my reports exchequer for life because in small groups sometimes you kind of are and I got asked to do the PayPal in 2018 actually I think it was 2017 when we first started talking about it and got training and really got it going and when I asked Michael um, Orontius when he was the the kingdom exchequer at the time I said well, why are you asking me and he said well you don't panic, which I honestly think is your best advice for gate. Don't panic. You know, be organized, get your details down, take your time, don't panic, we're gonna figure it out. Because a lot of people think, oh no, I screwed this up. Well, let's take a look and see, was it a big screw up or something we could just fix really easy, right. so. And most things can be fixed very, very easy. Exactly, so that's, we're hoping after this class, you'll feel a lot less panicky about the concept or the thought of running gate or working gate or doing PayPal. Great. So um, let's start with basically gate basics. I mean, uh, everybody knows what gate is and on the other side of the um, country, they call it troll in some, some kingdoms. So it's very interesting to, um, <laughs> to have that cross, uh, colonization. The SCA is a business and this is where our business starts. It's super important when we're talking about GATE and to understand who can actually run GATE, who can actually work GATE, and who can't. There are rules and unfortunately um, that's not to say that whoever, if you have somebody who shouldn't be up at GATE, um, uh, wants to help you can always find something for them to do because you know that's what we do we manage volunteers and it's very very important that everybody who wants to do something feels like they belong that is that is what the sda is all about but there are some rules so the first rule is your x checker for your group may not and that's not in capital letters be in charge of gate that's extremely important. Um, and it's really funny when I say that in exchequer training, most of the exchequer is going, what? It's like, mm -hmm. no, because of good cash management, and we'll get into cash management rules here in a few minutes, because of cash management and CYA and just if fraud's gonna happen, that's when it's gonna happen as at gate because you are dealing with a whole bunch of money. Who can be in charge of gate? Well, it's anyone who is acceptable to their excellencies, if you have excellencies, to the seneschal, to the autocrat, and more importantly, who is acceptable to the exchequer because for that time period, they are actually a deputy of the exchequer because everything financial goes through the exchequer. So you have to be able to trust this person explicitly. They should be somebody who's good at organizing, who has pretty good people skills, um, and can, um, as Catherine says, not panic because best laid plans, right? Something is always going to happen. We've, we've, it, it just, it happens. It's, it's the SCA, it's people. So the other thing is, is the person who's in front or who's your front person and in charge of gate and who's going to be handling your money must be a member. No ifs, ands, or buts. Over must be at least 18. That's the other one. 18 in the States, 19 in Canada. Correct. Age of majority is, is, is the terminology that's used. Yep. So barring any, you know, anything else, if you've got somebody who's going to be in charge of gate, then they need to put together a good team. And that's 
That's what makes good gates successful. They need a couple of captains because seriously, they should not be sitting gate the entire time. That is just not, that's not practical. That's when mistakes are made. It's, uh, they need to sit and eat. They need to be handling things. They may be, you know, they, they have, <laughs> they need potty breaks, right? They should not be sitting there the entire time. So they need successful gate captains. And we'll get into more about, you know, good people management later. The next thing is, is basically the SCA is a business. And at this point, this is where we have to very much act like a business. You're taking in cash. You are dealing with, if you decide to run PayPal, you're dealing with credit cards. You're dealing with the business side of the SCA. So your person has to be able to follow through and reconcile everything from beginning to end, working with whomever it is that's on their team and their exchequer. Now that doesn't mean the exchequer can't work gate, but they should stay away from the cash box. They can sign people in, they can, they can run PayPal, and sit at the PayPal line if, if you happen to have one because you're not physically handling cash, right? So uh, they should be, they should be involved if they wanna be because everybody should have a chance to volunteer and be involved if that's what they choose to do. I don't ever say no to anybody unless they're not a member and not, not 18 because anybody having handling cash should be those two things. So that being said, then let's start talking about good cash management rules. My rule for cash is always too deep, just like with kids, any offer and everything else, two competent adults, too deep, period. That way, there is absolutely no question if something were to happen, if fraud were to happen, that's when it's going to. And, and I'm, I'm going to bring it up now just because it's happened, unfortunately. And um, both Catherine and I have been the investigators of gates yes. that did not go as they should have. And there was reported money stolen. And even the hint of anybody saying that an investigation there has to be involved, uh, has to happen and a complete audit has to happen. That being said, so that everybody's on the same page, because Catherine, what happens with money and people? people get money about money. That is my, that's my mantra as an exchequer. People yep. get funny about money. They really do. The most contentious discussions I've ever had in the SCA, whether it be for budgeting or running gate or anything else is about money. So let's start with the process. About two weeks before your event, and this is based on the size of your event, you need to get your cash draw. Now, your exchequer is going to want a check request and, and definitely deal with your exchequer at that point. Get a check request, get a draw, and then get the cash for your cash box. If you have a smaller event, you could probably, depending on what your site fee is, eh, you could probably get away with $200 of, of cash. If, yeah. um, I mean, it, Honestly, if I was going to say, if you could make your site fees end in five, you will be much happier than, than having to deal with ones. But I could say, you know, 150 to $200 in, in, in fives um, for your cash uh, draw. If it's going to be a larger event, it's a war, you might be looking at, you know, about $800 in fives. But that's something, that's a discussion that you need to be having with your, your excellencies, your seneschal and your um, exchequer as to how much cash seed you need to start with. And that's always a draw. That's as uh, exchequers know, if any of, their, any, any of you on here who are exchequers, that's what it's called. Basically what it means is you are taking a loan from the SCA and you have to pay that back. It's called an accounts receivable. 
the way you pay it back is bringing it back to the, the event if, as the uh, result of cash, right? If you have a kingdom event, you may want, you know, $1,500 in fives. Yeah. Because we've had, we've had that happen where we've had to go back, you know, go out and buy more fives. It just, that it really depends on the size of your event. The next thing that you want to do is once you have that is you come, you go to the bank, you cash that check, get your cash box, come to your event. The first thing you do is get your gate heads together or your seneschal or someone else to count that cash, sign off that you have returned the money in the form of your gate seed. That way, I'm going to talk a lot about CYA. That way, you have paid back that $2,000, let's just use that number, you have paid that back in the form of the cash. They gave you a check, you gave cash back. And this is really important because the check that was written for your gate seat is made to you as a person. So you are on the hook for that. So if it you goes are. Missing, and this way, someone else has said, yep, Catherine showed back up with the $2,000 and and here's a little piece of paper that says, um, yeah. I have signed this money back in. And yeah. um, your exchequer will be a big help with that. And you should certainly, uh, however you decide you want to set up your gate for that, but at least you have given the money back in, as cash seed. Right. Now, I'm going to say right off that the way that I am teaching gate tonight is not the one true way. Okay. It's a way that we do it and has been done for several events. And that's the way I teach it. There's always other ways, as long as you hit the, 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 the main points of what needs to happen. Um, and I'm always open to suggestions and, and we will be discussing, you know, ideas that people might have. We may all be, especially in these days of COVID, I'm hoping we can have a short discussion, if we have the time, a longer one, about ideas of what we can do as far as COVID goes, because we have not gotten any feedback from the powers that be, although we're, you know, no events until the end of January, but there are some common sense stuff that we have put together that we'll be discussing a little later. So anyway, so Gate is all about good cash management, and that leads to basically your gate sheets. And I'm going to share my screen so everybody can see this. Yes, okay. So we've all seen these, right? And there are many, many, many uh, different ones out there. This one happens to be two-sided. It has the, the uh, basically the the waivers on the one side and the the other stuff on the uh, the main sheet on the other side. I realize that everybody's seen these, but it is amazing at how many times they don't get filled out correctly. And I'm gonna really reiterate here that it is super important that these get filled out correctly. And the reason being is because the SCA is a business and this is your accounting record. This is the record of what happened at the gate. This is the record of how much money you took in. This is the record of how much money we owe corporate because of the NMR fee. This one here. Wah. It is the record of everything that happens. And, un and unfortunately, due to the state of California, we are having to send these to corporate and you never know when your group or your event will get chosen to have all the transactions for a certain event to get set down to California. So it is super important that these are filled out correctly. Does that make sense to everybody? Mm -hmm. So of course, let's start with SCA name, your modern name, what branch you're at, now here's the really adult and youth. It's really funny how many people don't fill this out. Member number, expiration date, whether it's a blue or white. Now, uh, whites are becoming increasingly not happening because we're all citing the waiver online. So I don't even know if they're even sending out white cards anymore. Most everybody's blue. So you probably won't use that. Your member event fee, 
your non-member event fee and the total pay. Now, the way most of the wording is done, it is the member, it's, it's the entry fee, which would be $30. Members get in for 25. So what you, what you would do, because the, 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 the surcharge, right? So you'd have the member fee here be 25. It was a non-member over here, it would be 30. And then you would have cash or check. And then for this, you would write basically the check number, and, and because it's easy, really important in this particular form to be able to come back to if there's a problem with the gate sheet to go back with the person right. and find them and, and find that check number. So with this system that I'm going to be teaching about, it's co more commonly known as the envelope system. And the envelope system can grow or contract depending on how big your event is. The reason for the envelope is to lessen the mistakes happening or catching them more readily or faster so that you're not sitting at the end of the event going, oh, wait a minute, what happened here? And you have to go back and try and hunt somebody down because you can't figure out what they did. So whether you're sitting at gate after the person that leaves, a really good idea, either grab the clipboard or the binder, is to take a look at it and make sure that they filled everything all the way across. You will be so much happier when you go to reconcile everything yeah. if you make sure you do that for yourself. Because I always say, once you are done with that gate sheet and you check out before you get your net gate sheet, and I'll show you the envelopes and stuff, the, the labels and stuff when we get there, you make sure you total things and make sure it comes back to whatever it is that it needs to come back to. It's also a really good time to make sure you got waivers. <laughs> Correct. And with this particular form, if you look, you know, line two is, is a non-member. So you go down here and they should be signing on line two. Right. And I think, I don't know if this is the one that has the equestrian one in it or not. There is a form that actually has the equestrian. Um, it was done by uh, uh, Baron Thorkel of Wastekeep. He basically made this part right in through here work with the equestrian so that it's all in one. And in, in the form of equestrian, we'd all sign the back sheet. This way they're all on, you know, double-sided. You're not dealing with a whole bunch of waivers uh, that can get lost um, because we are we have to prove how many non-members we have. The insurance people do look at that. It's one of the part of the audit, essentially. So anyway, so that's, you're all familiar with it. Make sure that you fill it out. Uh, make sure that you're checking to make sure that it's all filled out. Because one of the things, where to go? There we are. Is we're starting with envelopes. And you've talked, I, I've talked about this being the envelope system. Now, depending on how big your event is, you may want to, we always use number 10 envelopes and we always number our gate sheets. So depending on the, you know, how big your, how big your event is, you figure you should have some history as to how many people you're supposed to have at an event In a kingdom event you know, figure there's going to be 1,500. Well, there's 15 lines. You're going to need 100 gate sheets. So you go through to the gate sheets, right? And you number them down here. Number one of 100. And the reason why you do that is because if something's going to happen, you can come back and make sure that you have all your gate sheets because it's really simple. And I know I keep harping on this, but it's so true because we've had it happen. That's the sad part it's really easy to have one of those gate sheets just disappear. Mm -hmm. Right? Very, then, go ahead. As I say, if you pre-number them, you avoid the dreaded, why do we have two number 12s? Right. <laughs> been there, done that. Yes. Yep, been here. Been there, done that. So, and you also need a master list, which is this. This would be your master list. If you only numbered, you know, 39, then of course, you know, you'd get rid of these and, and then you go. 
And this was for our, this was our spreadsheet. This you could just put name of event. I remember that year. So yeah. Why did it go from 48 to 60 without 40? Um, because, because I did a quick down and I hadn't cleaned it up some, so it's fine. So you would have, you know, add your lines. To, actually, if you look at this, there are lines hidden. So that's part of the reason why, is there were lines hidden. So basically, you have a master list of your sheets and how many sheets are there. Here would be like your first count, second count for gate seed return you'd have, uh, you know, basically uh, it, when it's returned, you could have 10, you know, whatever this is and make it work. Oh, excuse me, sorry. Anyway, so back to gate sheets and events. Oh, here we go. Katina, you're gonna make that template available, right? Yes, so. yes, yeah. I've got, I've got three or four templates to make available for everybody. And if you are just doing cash boxes, then here's the cash box. These can be, you know, printed on basically paper and you basically on here, you write which gay sheets went with this cash box. You have a date, you have your starting cash, and then you start basically totaling up all your gate sheets and fill this in. With the envelopes, these can be printed on great big large sheets and then you cut them off and you place them on. And once you've filled out a gate sheet, then you fold it up and whatever money came in to that particular gate sheet, fold it up, put it in an envelope, seal it up, sign it. After you've reconciled it, you basically, you know, take yourself off, do a little count and come back with, you know, someone with whoever's your gate captain at that point, whoever's their, the shift manager, sign off. And it needs to be counted at least twice and it needs to be counted by people who have not done it before. So you do your first count, your gate captain does the second count, and then there'll be a third count when you basically reconciled the whole thing. It sounds like a lot, but it trust me, when you're dealing with $17,000 in cash, that second or third count really makes a big difference. It's super important. So basically now you've gotten these envelopes with your how many adults you have, how many youth you have, how many children you have, how many NMR, which is super important because you have to have your NMR check off to Kingdom posted within 10 business days. So that's also very important because that needs to, that needs to tr trickle uphill to your exchequer. Super important. People total. You know how, especially with some of the events, they want pretty fast how many people we're at the event, if you have it totaled on these envelopes, then you can run whoever your gatehead is. They can just, they put them in numerical order once they start coming in, right? They start putting them in numerical order. They can run a quick total and give the autocrat basically the numbers. So this is helping you stay organized. So, and then with the cash box, same thing. You gather up all the sheets that you had for that cash box, and then you sit and do starting cash, how much was in there, who it was received by, and this is, you know, who basically was doing it. You've got your totals down here for counted by, and two counts, always two people for cash, always, always. How many, how many $1 bills, how many fives, how many tens, how many twenties, and if there's any others, how many cash, you know, how much uh, in checks are there. It's always handy to make sure you've got a 10 key with you or some way to, you know, total those checks so we can have that, have that happen. So you total those all up, you get yourselves in, put them in numerical order, and then, you know, you just keep going. And the real important thing is to have, whether you're doing it in binders, which I've seen happen, or whether you're doing it with clipboards, just have, you know, 10 clipboards set up with uh, envelopes and gate sheets, and then you can just swap them out really fast. So it's super easy. It really is. It's just taking a little bit of time ahead of time to make sure that you're organized and that you're handling your cash well. The other gate sheet that we have is for comps and credit cards. And I will let Catherine talk about that when we get there. 
So let's talk a little bit about gate setup. When you do gate setup, depending on uh, how many you know, places you think you're gonna need. If we're talking a kingdom event, you're gonna want at least two for PayPal, and then you're gonna want three or four, at least for the big runs, right? For your big runs that, that are gonna be about, you're always gonna have some that always show up early. Gate opens at three, people are gonna be there at one. It's just you know, the way they, that, that, that it is. And our first gate back, um, our first event back once this pandemic is lifted is going to be a zoo. I can just, I just can see it now. It's going to be crazy because we're all going to want to get back to, together and see each other. So basically you have, you know, four people that can handle them. Your comps, you should have that on a separate clipboard. Don't let the comps get in with your main gate people because it can it it can mess up the comps. It also helps take um, a little bit of confusion out, right? Oh well, I wasn't supposed to sign in here. You know, scratch, 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 scratch. No comps you should have handled on an, a separate clipboard, and you could do that over with PayPal. Uh, that a lot of people do run PayPal and comps because you're not dealing with cash, right? Right. You're not dealing with checks. You're not dealing with cash. Go ahead. We've had people who, you know, it's checked comp and then somebody went back because it said an adult and wrote in the adult fee and then you're trying to reconcile this and it's like, mm -hmm. but no, they were comped or right. did they actually pay? And the other thing we've done is we've started writing in, when we check comp, we write king, queen, whatever. Just because right. sometimes it's like, why was this person comped? comped. Yeah. <laughs> right. So. And that is, that is definitely one thing, that is a discussion that needs to happen with your financial committee and be part of your financial policy as to who is comped. Now, king is always comped. King and queen, royal, royal family, always comped. Uh, heirs, princes and princesses, they're heirs. Per kingdom law, always comped. If you guys decide that you want to comp people, you need to make sure that A, they are members. No non-member may be comped unless it's a contractual thing, like you're having the event at the Boy Scouts and it, part of your contract says that they get to wander in and see the event. Well, they don't just get to wander in, they've got to sign their waivers, right? But anybody else, if they are a non-member, cannot come in comped straight from the bod. We have no, no if, ands, or buts. That's just the way it is. Any other comps say, okay, so uh, Port de when we do Day of Dance, we have as part of our financial policy that musicians are comped as long as they're members. That's just something we do. If you have any others, you need to make sure that it's part of the financial policy that they are comped. You can't just say, oh, well, we're just going to do this. It has to be a decision of the financial committee. So that's another reason why comps are on another sheet because it makes it much easier to reconcile. So, um, okay, so you've gotten all of your shifts covered. You've got your, your gate camptons. You're working on everybody's coming and they're signing in and um, you're getting back envelopes. Uh, if you've got or can manage it, to have an off-site place to be able to start the reconciliation process, great. Only if you can make sure to have some place to have the privacy to be able to, because trust me, counting cash in the wind, although it's exciting and I've done it, it not really the best idea. To, <laughs> we've done it, but no, not really the best idea. So as long as you have a tent nearby, if you're at a fairground, usually there's a building you can go in. Hopefully you will have power. And then you can have, make sure that you've got your two people and then you start basically the cash process. It's really handy because then you can go make your, if you can make a bank run on Saturday, because a lot of people do, then you already have a reconciliation of what has been taken away. And, and you can start that. So basically you have your envelope, right? And you can just have your second person count it. 
and then you can start putting it in on your gate sheet. Now, these, this here, gates one and gates two, this was when, if you have merchants, getting them their own gate sheets and having a designated person, probably your, your, whoever is your merchantocrat, unless you're having them pre-reg only, and that pre-reg includes their site fee, then you still need to have them sign in. So basically designate some that are just for the merchants and they can wander around and get them signed in and all that stuff. But that would be basically a, uh, something that can happen with your merchant of crap. And then you start with great, you know, gate three and you know, you've got uh, sheet three had 10 adults. Oh, let's see. Wait, that long. There we go. 10 adults and three youths and two childs. And three of them were non-members. So you, you see you come to total, and then you know here you can keep a running total of how many people have come to gate. If you don't have electricity, and this is all stuff that can be done you know, after the event, but given what the rules are to get money into the bank, it's really nice to be able to do some of this at site if you are able. <sighs> Designating, you know, say uh, comps here, this actually is uh, when we actually did comps per the sheets. Uh, we stopped doing that, but you could have, you know, designated 40 as comps. And then you can put, you know, 15 there, say, with all of the, if this was a kingdom event, you could very easily have that many comps. And then you come over here, and then you key in, you know, say we did, and I'm just going to stick some numbers. There was, there was 150, and you see it fills it out for you. There were 30, you know, 35 um, 20s, 110, 15, six ones. Okay. Then you've got this total here as to how much should be in the envelope, and that will match back to your hopefully your total envelope total here. And it makes it much easier because you're taking those in small bites. Catherine, do you want to talk about PayPal? So the biggest difference, if you noticed on her PayPal gate sheet. I'll bring it up. There we go. The comps, like I said, we like to check that and then say who they were. So in other words, why did we comp them? Now, there are some very sneaky people. Uh, I was, I'm trying to remember which event it was where King and Queen from uh, just snuck through. Artemisia. And we tried to catch them because they were supposed to be comped and they're like, nope, nope, you didn't see us. We're not, we're not those people. <laughs> they wanted to pay. Well, that's okay. They can do that. They can, they can pay. We're not going to force them to be comped, but it, it helps to know because sometimes you're, you know, people will sit down and reconcile gate and go, why did this person get in, you know, without paying? Well, because they're a kingdom officer and they were required to be there or they're a kingdom champion and they're required to be there, whatever. There's reasons but we want to know what they are. So if it is a credit card, if you're doing this and, and you can see the CC column, once you've checked that, we'd like you to write the time of the transaction. It doesn't have to be exact, but it has to be really close. Because what we've discovered is when we run our PayPal report after the event and we're trying to reconcile it with the gate sheets, that's the best way to make sure that what's on the PayPal report matches what's on the gate sheet. Um, the transaction numbers are really, really long because we were going to try to write those down, but I don't think you want to write 11 digits down in a tiny little space. So if you're going to do PayPal, if you've decided you want to do PayPal at your gate, the PayPal here is what that's called. First of all, you your branch must have already been approved to use PayPal. And in order to be approved, you have to have a couple of things. It has to be in your financial policy, which must have already been approved by Kingdom, that your branch wants to use and intends to use PayPal. There is sample language in my handout, which I'll put up in just a minute, um, that you can use if you haven't already done that. You also must be totally current on your reports, your exchequer reports, and you must be totally current on your NMR. And if you're in arrears on any of those things and or do not have it in your, look at that, you're gonna put it up for me, you're so sweet. There we go. Yay. I think this is the more current one. It'll work, it'll work. If you don't have those things down, 
then we can't approve your event. And then the next step is you've got those things in line. So you've already been approved to, to use PayPal. Um, then you send me the authorization form, which is I think clear at the back of this, Etienne. Last page, I think. Here's the financial, the sample policy. The sample policy. Well, that's the kingdom financial policy. You can use right, that. Right. Here we go. Yeah. Okay, so this authorization form, this is event specific. This isn't for, we want PayPal eventually. This is, we want it for this event. Now you'll notice we need all these little things filled in, exchequer phone, exchequer email, branch mailing address is important. I have mailed checks <laughs> before that have sat there for a month before anyone went to get them. Gate stewards email, and I think I need to change that and put their name in there because I'll probably be working more closely with your gate steward than I will with your exchequer when it comes to these things, because they're the ones that are gonna have to set up someone for the PayPal line. We also require, and this can be done online, that whoever's going to be running PayPal has actually gone through the training for how to use PayPal so that they know what they're doing. And they can train other people if they need to, but you're going to want, again, you're going to want to schedule with, you know, X amount of people who are going to work your PayPal line or lines if you have more than one for large events. Um, because when I have all of this information, you're going to give me your price, I call them your price points. You know, if you're going to have like bunks and meals, you can fill all those things in. You're going to give me your, you know, what you're charging adults. You also need to give me the information on who's going to be doing this, what their modern name is, what their SCA name is, membership number and expiration. Once I have all of this and your event's gonna be up and running, I have to go into PayPal and set up login information, specific login for that event for those people. And that's why it's really important for me to have those names so that I can set those things up. And then I have all of that information. So this is the preliminary stuff you do before you're gonna use PayPal. Now, Etienne, if you can go back up to, okay. to the pretty pictures. So once, a little more, a little more. Okay, once we have all that set up, um, you need to make sure that you have either a tablet or an iPad, you can use smartphones. Um, we kind of recommend against it because very few groups actually have a smartphone that's just there. So you're going to be using some ones. Do not, I, do not use personal. Just yeah. don't use a personal smartphone for this because we have had where uh, it has happened society wide. We have had where, unfortunately, the money that they took went into a personal account as opposed to their PayPal account for the group. So Oops. just, if you can do it, don't use personal. Um, there are a lot of really inexpensive tablets out there. And if you find that you think you're going to be doing PayPal a lot, get your group a PayPal um, tablet. Kingdom does own one um, iPad that can be loaned out, but it's a little, you know, we're a big kingdom. It's a little wonky getting it to and from events. We also, the kingdom also has a triangle and a chip reader that can be loaned out. But if you think you're gonna do this, it's best to get a, a branch owned tablet that you can download PayPal here onto and pick up a triangle. It costs like 15 to 20 bucks. They're on sale. You can actually get them at Staples now. You don't even have to go through PayPal, which I thought was interesting. <laughs> I know. Who knew, yeah. So, because you're gonna to have to have both those things for your cards. Um, go ahead and scroll down. You download the PayPal Here app. Now, again, I'm gonna be setting up your logon information. You can see that's the first um, pretty little, I can scroll this, there you go, thank you. The, this first one here, you're gonna log on with your, your email and your login that's specific to you. It's gonna pull up a screen that looks something like this. Now, one thing I did discover is it's better for me to set it up so that each event has an item and then options. So it would be Terra Primaria, Baronial Banquet, and below that the options will be adult, youth, child, whatever. And 
that way, when you go to it, all of your price points for your event are gonna be in the one place. So you're not trying to scroll through, well, we don't have bunks, we don't have that. You're not trying to scroll through all these other things. They'll just be your event's price points underneath your event's names. So I need to change that picture on my, my thing. So the person comes, you look at the gate sheet, you, you pull up your thing, you note that they've got, they're gonna be paying for two adults and two kids. So you're going to, where'd you go? Go back up. Back up. Back up, thank you. Two adults and two kids. And you're going to select that. And when you do, it'll give you an option for the number of those. So you can select it twice, however many times you need. And then there's a little done button and you're going to double check the price. Do not ever type in a price. We're not supposed to do that. We're only supposed to use the buttons. Um, I don't know why, to be honest. Do you know why? I think it's to minimize um, errors. Uh, errors, basically. Yeah. It, you, you don't, you know, decimal points are a big thing. $50 yeah. as opposed to $500 or, you know. It's a donation. <laughs> it's a donation. <laughs> um, so you double check it. Let's go down. Keep going. See how pretty it looks like okay. on a phone. And then once you're sure and you've confirmed, okay, so we've got that, you confirm the amount with the person, you're going to swipe that card. And then, then you confirm that using a finger and they have to, everybody scribbles on the screen. You guys have all done this at Merchants, right? Different places where you go anymore. It's like, and then you scribble something or make an X, whatever. Um, and I can actually look at your scribbles in PayPal, which is interesting. Trust me, very interesting. <laughs> and, and then the charge has got the, oh, and they also ask you, I just noticed this says pounds. Four, charge four pounds to me. <laughs> okay. Um, go on down. And they're gonna ask if you if they're gonna if you want um, a receipt. Most people say no. And then you're gonna write the like I said the approximate time. You see up there where it says 10:48. That's the time you would write on your gate sheet. Yeah, where is it at? 4 cc. Yep, there you go. Right here. 10:45 or 10:48. Right in there. And again, if you if you forget to look at the exact time and you write, you know, 10:50, that's going to be fine because I'll be able to find that amount on the PayPal report. Um, and that's what we look at when we're trying to reconcile is is the time on. You know, my PayPal report should pretty much flow with the gate sheets. Even if you have two lines going, I can put the two gate sheets side by side. Find the people with the right amounts. Now, here's the weird thing on the PayPal reports that things we've learned that we have to pay more attention to. Sometimes people like, I don't know, Mistress Etienne might use, her, might use her business credit card, <clears throat> which does not have her name on it. So my PayPal report says, you know, what's the Blue name? Blue Bug Bookkeeping. Blue Bug, I, I remember the bug. I was going to say Ladybug. Blue Bug Bookkeeping. And I'm looking for a Blue Bug Bookkeeping who apparently did not attend the event. <laughs> So if you see a credit card that's something like that, or if the name is substantially different from the name, please write the name on the card under modern name, you know, find a way to squeeze that in there. Because again, when I'm trying to reconcile, if I don't have names, it can be a lot more confusing. Sometimes PayPal doesn't give me any names on the report, which I don't know why that is. But if I only have a few of those, it's easy to reconcile. But if I have a bunch, it's hard. So yeah, if the name is significantly different, like if, if my card doesn't have you know, the name Kathleen, it's got some other person's name, you're gonna to wanna to ask about that. This is like when people ask you for ID, we don't do that, but it's just a way for us to kind of check and make sure they're supposed to be using this card. Um, I don't worry too much about last names, especially for women, because you get married, you didn't change your name on your card, whatever, I'm okay with that. But these are a couple of things we've noted that have been a little processy thing that's different. So just like any other line at Gate, you have them fill out the Gate sheet first. Um, then you do, you, you pull up your, your um, PayPal here, find the right items, make sure you've got you know, the right number of each of those items so the total is correct. It asks you to verify that, swipe the card, make sure they've done their waiver if they're supposed to, 
and you're good to go. Because that was the other thing we noticed the very first couple times we used PayPal was because of this extra little swiping you know, process, we were skipping some of the other stuff sometimes, like double checking on waivers, making sure that got in there. So it's that simple. It just, that's, it's really not a lot different than making change, to be honest. It's you just go in, should we make a note if one person pays for someone else? Yes. Um, hopefully they're on, if they're going to do that, make sure they're on the same gate sheet, gate just sheet. like we try to do with checks. You right. don't want them carrying over. So I, I don't know if you do, like with checks, I usually do the little parentheses sort of thing that shows all of these people are on this check number. We try to do the same thing in PayPal. So if you've got like four or five people and they're all going to be on the same swipe, you know, so it adds up to 120 right. bucks or whatever, make sure you do the little, what is that called? It's not parentheses, but you know, the little thing. I don't care what you do. Anything that lets me know that all of those people are included on one. Does that make sense? So that's how you would do that. And yes, still put the time in. But make sure they're on one sheet. Because we did have that. That was at another event where this person in this line also paid for those people over in that line, which turned out to be a cash line. So we were really confused when we were trying to reconcile that. It's like, well, where are those other people? We did reconcile. You know, all these things can be worked out. Right. These are things to try to do. And, you know, there's nothing wrong if you've got, you know, three lines left and it's a group of four people to put them on a different sheet. Right. You know, right. so they can all be together on the same sheet. Like that makes family. it much easier. It does. It makes it when you go to reconcile that that's really important. Thanks for bringing that up, Catherine. Um, if you've got three, uh, you know, lines left and there's four people start it, bundle it up, seal it up and grab another one and put them all on the same one. Yeah. And just scribble through those lines so that we know. Yeah. Right. And then just draw, you know, draw some lines through it so that, you know, only that one will be short by three. Try not to split them up unless, of course, you're doing cash box and your envelope's bigger and you have, you know, more uh, gate sheets for that cash box. But right. just try to be very consistent when they when they do that. Looks like we've got a how do you handle someone who pays then comes back to gate and realize they're comped. Refunds are never handled at gate. End of story. They will have to get a check back. They will have to put in a formal request for a check. Right. That now, includes for PayPal. That includes for PayPal and it's standard policy for society. We do not issue refunds for through PayPal, mm -mm. except this year. Because <laughs> <laughs> with COVID, we had a number of pretty big events that had a lot of pre-reg already paid and we, we got um, an, an dispensation, an exception through society. We had to ask through it through society to issue refunds through PayPal and that and the kingdom, our kingdom, I don't know if they did this in all kingdoms, but our kingdom agreed to to cover the fees so that the person could get the full 25 back instead of having to have the key fees come out. Now I found out because who knew we were going to do refunds through PayPal, so I hadn't looked into it, that PayPal actually refunds the percentage. They didn't refund the 30 cents per invoice, but they refunded the 2.2% on their own. So that was nice. So, you know, we didn't have quite as big of a chunk that we had to cover. And because there, the one event we had to do, I think it was Eggles, you know, there was like 150 people that had pre-regged. That would have been a lot of checks. Most groups don't have all that many checks hanging around. Now there was a smaller group that only had like five people. They just wrote checks to them. So, but as standard policy, we do not issue refunds through PayPal. So and no, yeah, and no refunds through the cash box, period. Yeah, no refunds through the cash Absolutely box. Absolutely none. None. And you um, don't take out petty cash out of the cash box either. No, <laughs> no, no. Catherine, why don't you just touch on um, the, uh, the cost of doing PayPal real quick so people understand. So PayPal is 2.2, oh, if you're invoicing, that's, there's a difference because if you're pre-regging, you're going to invoice. Invoices are 30 cents per invoice plus 2.2% um, for U.S. branches and 2.4% for Canadian branches. And again, that's something we learned after the fact. We've learned so many things doing this. The initial training came out of Florida and apparently they don't do cross-border stuff. So they didn't have a lot of answers. It is 2.7% flat fee for PayPal here. 
which really, and you know, a lot of people have worried about what that's going to take out of their profits, and it really isn't that huge. That huge, you know, in the end run, it depends on how big your event is, which is why our sample policy for your financial committees came out. Of, it came out of three mountains. They actually designated, you know, large events, medium events, small events, and which ones they were willing to consider, you know, PayPal for. For a really small event, if it's not a horribly public event. I would say don't bother. But if it's one of those events that's fairly public, June Fair comes to mind, um, as, as does um, Ursulmus, where you've got a lot of people coming through that might want to do this but didn't bring enough cash. That's when PayPal can really come in handy, is where you've got you know, a large public presence and people didn't plan ahead to pay for this, but now they want to do it. So you know, it helps to have a credit card, because doesn't everybody take credit cards anymore? I mean, that's... <laughs> This yeah. is true. Checks are getting, I mean, they basically, checks are becoming a thing of the past anymore. Yeah. And cash. Yeah. I've heard of places that don't want to take cash and I'm like. Right. Especially these days yeah. with COVID, the people are not taking cash, but we're, we're planning for more events in the future for that. Yeah. Um, Other things to consider with PayPal that are really important is your wife, your connectivity to the internet. You've got to be able to access the internet for this. Uh, we've had issues in hotels where we, where we got bumped off a lot. We've had issues at more remote sites where you could get internet if you were outside of this building or not, or it was just sometimes you could, sometimes you couldn't. Um, July uh, coordination just last year, wasn't it at TNET, where we had to use your, your setup? Basically, what I would say to that is, if you can, before the event, get out there and find out what your options are. If, by chance, uh, you're just not comfortable, you can have someone's phone be a hot pot, hot spot, right? Right. And you can reimburse them for data, although most people have unlimited data these days. You can reimburse them for data if you're, um, and just have it as a backup. I have a MiFi because of my business and I brought it with me and the gate ended up using it at July Coronation because the, the Wi-Fi was so bad. It yeah. kept you know, knocking everybody off. So uh, just have a backup. It's super important because there were a lot of people who got to the site and couldn't run their card because we hadn't gotten there yet and because the, the Wi-Fi had gone down. So as Gatehead, you want to plan for that sort of thing. You want to make sure that you've got a backup for your backups. It's, um, we also brought, uh, you know, a lot of battery backups. You know, yes. the, they've, they've got them these days where they've got the the chargers. Um, so if you're going to be running electronics, make sure you've got significant power in case you don't have any. There are ways to do it. Yeah, because this can actually run your tablets down pretty fast if you're, if you're doing it a lot. Um, question, any discussion about PayPal for purely online events given COVID-19 restrictions? Yes, we can use PayPal for that and we can use PayPal for donations, which we it hadn't been told just we found out before. yeah found out what we, this what we, yeah just this mm -hmm. couple months ago what yep. we cannot do is use paypal for tangible items like t-shirts um even if it's part of the event or feastware i think um perfectly period peace had you could order feastware as part of it it was like 50 bucks but you could not use paypal for that um, I'm guessing, and the best answer I've gotten so far is that that has more to do with taxing, because if you're, if it's a tangible sales tax that you're taking with you, right. when sales tax comes in, and trust me, none of us really want to deal with that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, no, <laughs> yeah. No. definite no, shake no. of the head. No, you don't. No. So uh, that's what that's for. But we can take donations using PayPal, um, and nobody's, at, nobody's actually set that up yet, but we would set that up kind of like... Um, well, if you well, we're not doing in person, so it'd be an invoicing. It would have to be through an right. invoice. You would generate an invoice for you know whatever level of donation, and then they would pay that invoice. So I was happy about that because that makes sense to me. There are um, a lot of groups that are hurting that need to be able to come up with their budgetary items. So there's a lot of don talk about being able to do donations. So. Or or like I said, like this says, and I kind of like the idea, set it up as an online event and, you know, you're invoicing for whatever. It's still going to be kind of like a donation because it's, you're not actually there. Right. But it's, that's quibbling as far as I'm concerned. That's semantic. <laughs> you know, it's, it's your event registration right. fee. 
to kind of recap a little bit, um, you've, if you choose to go ahead and do envelopes, um, and basically the whole point behind the envelope system is that you are basically taking each uh, smaller bytes of something that's very big. And if you take it in smaller bytes, then basically you minimize transactional errors and it will make reconciliation at the end very, very easy. Let's talk a little bit about people management. If you have someone who really, really, really wants to um, help you, but isn't necessarily somebody who you know, or <laughs> frankly just comes out and says, I'm awful with handling money, I don't want to handle any money, then, you know, there are ways to find things for them to do. They can, if you have uh, your gate set up where you have people just running the, the gate sheets and they're passing you the cash for it, or what you can do is you can set it up so that they have the gate sheets people and then they bring their cash once they find out how much that's supposed to be over to the person who handles the cash. So there's lots and lots and lots of different ways to set things up. I prefer, you know, one one envelope, one person handling that cash, and you keep your gate seed completely out of it. Your envelope starts out empty, and you have the cash box that, that basically has the change. And if the envelope needs cash, they say, I need four fives, you hand a 20, you hand them four fives back. That way, gate seed is always gate seed. If you're ever short on a gate and gate reconciliation, it is never the gate seed that's short, ever. It's the event that's short because it's the person who uh, it, it comes back to the person who checked out that money, right? They could be on the uh, they could be on the hook basically for that money because gate seed was short. A and if you do these small bites, really, it's it's really easy to reconcile. It's super easy to reconcile because you've got it all spent, spelled out for you right here. And you get your numbers and you end up with really good numbers at the end. And then as far as cash management goes, you need to get the cash in the bank within two days after the close of the event. So Reconcile Monday, deposit on Tuesday, and if you can, have two people go to the bank with the cash, if you can. Really? That, that, that's, the, that's the recommendation. Now, that's not always feasible, right? But what you have to do is the exchequer and the seneschal need to know how much cash, because you give this copy of this spreadsheet to them, they need to know how much those deposits were. Yes. So that when they get the bank statement at after the event, they can say, yes, this matches up. I know that there were three deposits because I was, you know, I went to the, it was a great big event. The bank was close. We went to the, to the bank, you know, twice on Saturday, once at about one o'clock and the other one's right before closing it just to get the cash in the bank. And these are the amounts of the deposit. So they can look at the, the, the bank statement and, and check off next to it. And, and I say that because we have had it where that didn't happen. Oh, I dropped it in the night drop. Well, the night drop mm -hmm. never made it to the bank account. And we end up having to do an investigation on that. So this is where your exchequer and your seneschal need to come in here to make sure that every deposit they said that they they made are on there. That's your that's your double and check, right? That is the CYA of why this is it's so important. Okay, so uh, yes, the people, the gate tokens that we had a someone say that give volunteers to give out gate tokens and site handouts and stuff, and that's that's super important because we need to be inclusive. And quite frankly, if you make it fun, people are going to hand out gate and they're going to volunteer to do gate for you. And I mean, Friday night at Crowns are usually one of the best times because you get to see everybody. So why not work gate, right? Yes. Everybody you know who's there. And if you're running gate, have snacks for your gate folks, you know? That's, yep. Care, we call it um, care and feeding of volunteers. Yes. And um, there's a lot of different ways that people do that. Um, and you can provide and if you're going to be an outdoor event, you need to make sure you've got water for your gate people. Yes. This and is shade. something. 
right, this is something that can be worked into the event budget because it's for everybody who is there. So it's for, it's, it's not like providing a, you know, a Baron's tea or, or Baroness's tea. It's open to everybody. So you can have Twizzlers and, and uh, I've seen that, let's see, bought, uh, flats of water. Anybody comes up and grab a flat of water. If you're taking care of your people who are at gate because it's super important to make sure that they're taken care of. So they come back and do it again because it's a lot of fun. Oh, someone mentioned having a night bardic circle beside gate. That's a great idea. Yep, we used to do that a lot too. Entertainment the gate. Yep, we used to do that too. Um, do we have any questions? We, you know, trying to go through this pretty fast. Um, it's always harder to do it Zoom wise because I can't see faces and if, if people are understanding, I just keep um, blasting through. My best advice is much of what Etienne's real mantra is is prepare ahead of time, be organized, um, know, know your crew, have your crew ready to roll. Yep. Details matter at gate. Uh, you run into the things of, you know, people check that they've got a blue card, but don't write their number and their, and the expiration down. Well, you're, you're supposed to be, you know, we all have to look at that blue card. We have to see that blue card. That's the time to say, please make sure you fill that in because otherwise it can be hard to prove they actually had a blue card, but we charged them the member fee. Right. And you will end up owing that non-member fee if you can't prove that they were a member. So make sure that those columns are filled in. Some people are like, well, I don't want to have to do that. Well, that sucks to be you. Do you want to pay an extra five bucks? I mean, you don't put right. it that way because we're all really friendly at gate, but you know, that's the bottom line. And on the back, you know, if they're a non-member, again, if you're not going to have it on the back, you're going to have it on a separate waiver sheet, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with doing that. I like to, if, if you're not using the waivers on the back, you're using the separate sheet. And again, sorry, let me back up there. Kids waivers aren't included on the back. That is no, a separate sheet. That if is they're separate piece. Waiver. So I like to write the number of the gate sheet on the waiver or waivers if you're using separate waiver sheets. That way you could always go back and, you know, and double check that that was done properly. It's easier that way. I don't know if anyone in the waiver, if the waiver secretary ever looks to double check that you actually have the number right. of waivers you're supposed to, but if they do, that way you're, you know, you've kind of got that covered. You've covered that. You've covered that. And yes, that's uh, speaking about safety information. That's next on the list. So you've got your gate set up. Um, these are all the uh, little extra things. So let's talk a little bit about um, making sure that your autocrat who hopefully has um, done his or her due diligence, sorry, event steward, I'm old school, um, has basically got, you know, the hospitals that are nearby, the, the, uh, the list of um, any safety information um, should be in your um, uh, ha side handout. The bullying policy needs to be posted. Um, and that's, you know, things that you need to be working on with your seneschal to make sure that those are um, there. You also um, need to make sure that you, um, the ADA, you know, your parking, making sure you've got maps for your site and, um, but don't put your maps on your table for gate, have them separate. And that is gate, but not on the table. Correct, because otherwise you're gonna be, you know, holding up the lines. So that's another thing that you can have um, out there. And that's also something that uh, other, non-members or underage folks can help with is to direct people to those maps to be able to, you know, show where their everybody's camped, show them where the Eric's are. You know, sometimes it's really handy to have a, a message board up there for people, you know, to, uh, to put, uh, you know, where, hey, you know, Clan Karn is here and they can write on them. If you have the space, it's nice to be able to have your site maps and your gate tokens and stuff away from where all the cash is handled. Again, more volunteer opportunities for kids and for those, especially, you know, if they're working on their Yatha, I believe there is some, some volunteer stuff for that. Yep. So let's talk a little bit about COVID. Yeah, I think we all feel that that way. When we get back into opening back up again, there are going to be some things that we are going to need to do. Um, who knows how long, of course, masks are going to be required. And unfortunately, 
I don't see it happening anytime soon, unfortunately. And the rules are going to be different depending on where we all are. Oregon has different rules from where, say, Washington, and I'm not sure what's happening with Canada right now, other than the borders closed, so no kingdom events. COVID is basically common sense, right? The, some of the things you can do when you're setting up your gate is map out six feet apart. Yeah. When you're laying it out. Something we did. Yes. At um, Kingdom A&S, which was the last, you know, big event before it all blew up in our faces, is we actually had started where our pens, we had a right. clean pen jar and a dirty pen jar. So you got the pen, you filled out your form, you put it in the dirty pen jar, and then your gate staff took, you know, wipes and cleaned those off before they went down. down. The clean bit. We also had a lot of hand sanitizer everywhere. So those are little things we can do. Right. And then um, as Eden did point it out, you're probably going to lead a, need a lot more table space, right? You're going to need to be able to set some of these lines six feet apart from each other. In other words, you know, a normal table uh, that's eight feet long, we used to be able to fit three or four lines there. Mm, maybe two lines and then, you know, Six feet away is another table with someone. So it's, it's. And then, and then doing the grocery store, like you said, they've got the six right. feet back. They got little, it's like your mark on a stage. Correct. You know? Right. Stay basically. You can move up. Right. Um, and then. You help. Yeah, right. And then we're going to talk about, uh, you know, making sure that everybody's wearing their masks and someone's probably, if it is required that we all wear masks, if someone doesn't wear their mask, you need to discuss how that's going to be handled because you, the last thing you want is someone to get angry at one of your little volunteers. It, it just wouldn't end good for everybody. You need to have someone hopefully who has the authority to be able to say, no, I'm sorry. We are required that everybody wears masks. You're not wearing one. You can't come in. Ooh, new duties for barons and baronesses. <laughs> Well, that, that, that is, you know, <laughs> it, it may take a peer or someone like a better or better else to basically say, sorry, you know, oh. and like I said, yes, um, Jacqueline, it, it depends on the location and where you're at. In Washington, they're required. I miss, I believe Oregon too. Yes. I think they are in Oregon. Anybody here in Oregon? Right. Yeah. Yes, they're all or they're in Oregon. There you are. Yes, but I believe in Washington. In here, mask is required. Oregon. The so we don't know what it's going to. Yeah, really. Who's biggest yeah. fighter outside? Yes. I I think they should be there in a helm, and the mask should be on the outside of the helm, just yes. you know, for visual purposes. Yeah. All right. That's true. Um, Seneschals are ones with the legal authority to. They ask are. To they leave are. The and and it would probably take that, but it if we can, you know de-escalate the situation and have someone that would be the last the last thing straw. yeah the last straw we need to have someone you need to have someone who can de-escalate it and and basically handle it before it gets to that point mm -hmm. to protect everyone including your poor little gate people this reminds me though the other thing that happens is gate is when people have questions about an event or the schedule right. or whatever they tend to go to gate to get those answers and a lot of times our event stewards forget that and gate ends up being asked a lot of questions. They're like, I, I don't know. Right. So if, if that's something we can work on with our event stewards to make sure that they've looped in any changes in schedule or location mm -hmm. so that we can, you know, Lock again, and whatever, at least that way we can, we can not get kind of the wrath of people who look at us like, well, why don't you know? Right. Because I just sign you in and, and take money. <laughs> so it's really a good idea to have, yes, two-way radios and main, and in this day's, uh, if, if radios or cell phones, to yeah. be able to contact them right away and they know. Radios, I think, work better because in the noise of everything, it's kind of hard sometimes to hear those cell phones ringing. Yeah especially if they're out in the middle of a fighter's practice or something, you know, because they're fighting out on the field. It's kind of hard to hear, hear things. But um, uh, yes, make sure you've got a radio. Make sure you've got a plan. It's really super important if you're going to be in charge of gate that you have a really, really good working relationship with your event staff. Yeah. Because as Catherine says, gate seems to be the hub for everybody. 
Yeah, coordinating those with Harold's point is really, really good. Actually, that could be another way to get information to Gate. If Harold's are running around in town, Crime's running around with you know changes, make sure you swing by Gate and tell us. Right. Because <laughs> usually the thing is, is Gate's usually out in the boonies and we don't always know what's going on. So it's really important that they update Gate. Not that we admit so, that, but yeah. Right. Any yeah. other questions? I know I went through this pretty fast. Important things are fill out the gate sheets. Make sure you're doing small bits, your envelopes, regardless of whether your envelope is a, a, a number 10, you decide to put 10 sheets together and that's in a big envelope, or it's a cash box. It's still the same thought. You have all the money for all those gate sheets and you reconcile those gate sheets to that cash box. Yes. And it makes reconciliation so much easily, easier and two people deep when dealing with cash. And have fun. It really is a lot of fun. It is. It's a lot I, of fun. I love it. I love working gate. Me too. Can you tell but we're group? Yeah. We're an ad, yes, we're admin junkies. <laughs> I'm seeing a lot of admin junkies on here. Yes, we're admin junkies. Any other questions? I was going to say, I really wish I'd taken this class before I co uh, co gate stewarded onto your what for? Yeah, do it do it at a big event. That's that's what we yeah. really recommend. Choose right. a big event to start with. Yeah. No, no, I did one smaller one previously. There was a reason yeah. it was a co steward. <laughs> But, you know, this is also another way to learn a lot of things. Plus, you can put faces with names. I got to tell you, that's been one of the most fun things is, oh, that's who you are. And especially in the age of Facebook, where we may have a different name, and then you can see the modern name and the SCA name, things start to click. It's and that really was actually, fun. and that was something that we did for the Ontario West War um, that we had, uh, that, that I was the co-steward of, is we actually made uh because we were we were both we're both recognizable but not to everybody and so we put pictures of ourselves at gate so that way right. um our our gate uh people knew who we were and that that seemed to help a lot but you know to... actually i've worked gate where at kingdom events where there's like a comp book so wherever the comp pages are had right. pictures of it the is... people you were expecting to be comped uh, for yeah. bigger events, that's actually very handy if you have, uh, basically, if you can get the pictures of all these people, then, uh, you know, you don't get the, oh, head, here, my lord, go ahead, sign in, and they, and, and you are, oh, I'm the king. Well, that's, that's, that's going to happen because not everybody has met the king or has even seen him, especially when they travel to some of the more rural places yeah. in this kingdom of ours, because we're pretty big. Yeah, the first event that I uh, gate captain was a coronet event, and they're like, yeah, so the princes and, you know, and I'm trying to get a general description of them because they're both from southern areas and I've never met them. And right. <laughs> I don't right. know anybody. of. I think there could be t-shirts. Hi, I'm <laughs> uh, especially if they're coming in on Friday night. <laughs> right. Or they have to wear their cor their crowns. You know, it's like you're either wearing the crown or you got a t-shirt on, otherwise don't expect us to know who you are. Mug shots. That's exactly right. Mug yep. shots. So I told them I couldn't find the queen if my life depended on it, and I was right. Five minutes later I didn't recognize the queen. <laughs> right. Well everybody we looks different in, in moderns, right? We do. We do. Oh, I think we do it on purpose, even. I don't know. Oh, yeah, Levi, very much so. Yeah. You yeah, so I've, familiar. Yeah. Like, oh, why do I know you? Oh, especially <laughs> since, oh, it's, I actually had had Eric wait on me at a Target. I think it was a Target or Costco. Costco, that's what it was. I had it's Eric wait. Yeah. Right. And then I saw him at the site checking him in at, at Gate. So it's like, wait a minute, didn't I just see you? <laughs> 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 back when he was king that was that was a little weird having him wait on me that was a little and weird i'll be honest as a rule i think it i've only had a couple times where somebody has really been offended that we didn't recognize who's who they were and it, they were like a kingdom champion of something and i'm like well 
really? <laughs> How would we know this? You know, why are you, even in Kings and Queens are more like, yeah, I know nobody recognizes us without the crowns. It's right. most people are really cool about it. They don't get upset, but there's, there's, you know, be prepared. There might be somebody who's kind of full of themselves. And, and it's like, if that's going to offend you, you may be doing something wrong. Well, and, and then, then they become the cautionary tale when we're correct. discussing chivalry exactly. behavior. They do. It's like, are you true. sure you're a knight? Because you're kind of a jackass. Yeah. Well, oh, wait, yeah. <laughs> wait, was that my outside voice? Yeah. <laughs> Don't but worry. He most, most people, yes, <laughs> most people are just really good about not doing those things. Right. I think actually lists get more problems with that kind of thing than gate. But... How oh, do you not recognize my armor? And, uh, no. <laughs> and why do I can't find my authorization card, but my white belt should be good enough. <laughs> uh, yeah, no. Yeah, that's not. Yeah, sorry. Mm -hmm. Don't worry. If I ever fight in a tournament, I'll I'll just I'll write my name across my armor <laughs> <laughs> with like a giant X for Humana, but people Sashes. might interpret that incorrectly. Have Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Maybe if you put more X's. People will recognize it, like, X, X, X. Oh, more than no, three, though. No. <laughs> no, we just need just one of those, that. like, you know, Miss America sashes. There, yes. Sat that me. would be perfect. Shiny. And it can't just say, I'm important. <laughs> <laughs> I actually oh, had a Baroness do that to me. I was looking for, I was looking for their medallion and wasn't looking at her head. Because they were being, they were necklaces, and I said, "Where's your medallion?" She she pointed to her headdress and went, "This is it." And I went, "Oh, okay. yes, it is." I try Thank not you, to do that too often. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Your Excellency. I'm sorry. I was looking for your your entrance fee. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and that can get interesting. I know because uh, there are so many different coronets mm -hmm. and while we are relatively familiar with those in our immediate area um sometimes for those that, for for people who are not uh for people who have not yet studied what all the different little points and bubbles and thingies mean it can be a little tricky because all you're seeing is like the shiny thing right <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. And, <laughs> and it's something we all have to remember is we were all new once as well and not everybody understands the culture of the SCA and and um, doesn't recognize everybody right off the bat. So yeah. don't get offended if your card, you know, called my lord and my lady. And <laughs> if you're sitting gate and that's what you say, hopefully they won't. So especially if they're mo in modern, come on, give me a break. Right, right. They haven't put her on the good. regalia yet. John Doe and Jane Smith. Exactly. You are. <laughs> and yes, until you put on your clothes and your corner. Yeah. So. Well, and it looks like we are at eight thirty. So, um, I'll ask. Is, did anybody else have any questions? Any other questions about how an an envelope system is ran? And that is a system that we frequently use here in Terra Pomeria. So, um, if there are local I'm, questions, we can we can help with those. Um, and I will get these. Um, uh, I will get these loaded up. Is is the event still going to be able to allow me to post things? Um, if you message it to me directly, okay. I'll make I will sure do that. that okay. When I put it on YouTube, I'll put in links. And Catherine, you've already done your handout, right? Yeah, I, I posted it in the chat, and so they've got it, so they can okay, put that great. in there. Okay, so yeah, I will go ahead. I mean, I'll, I'll get these sent off. I've, I've got to go take care of a couple of things. So I, I might do it in the morning. Go ahead and get them all no sent problem. over to you. It was wonderful to have so many people attending. This is, this is great. Yeah, I think it's important nice. to do these. I, Thank I, you. Yeah, it's a, and we really appreciate, like I said, I wish, I wish I had managed to take the class before. <laughs> <laughs> None of us have ever done things backwards either. <laughs> right. None of us have learned by trial and error. <laughs> oh, been there, done that so many times. So right. well, it, it is always joy. Really no, yeah, I'm kind of like, no, no, I never did that. <laughs> it's always nice to have such very qualified teachers to be teaching our classes. Uh, we're we're very grateful for it. Yeah, well, anytime. And thank you. I um, I prefer to teach in person. Uh, this is only my first <laughs> internet class, 
It's I'm like, going to be looking for up. all of you at the first event back. That's, That's all right. I expect every <laughs> single one of you to be sitting gate at least once at the next kingdom event that we do. We'll bring snacks. <laughs>